Tyler, you want to play one with me? Let's do it. Since you're here and you have a guitar. I would love that. Uh, and it's plugged in and we did a sound check. I thought maybe you might like to do a song or I would two. love nothing you. more. Let's do it. Whew. Did you ever love a woman with a death wish? Something in her eyes like flipping off a light switch. Everybody dies, but you got to find a reason to carry on. Did you ever catch her climbing on the rooftop Higher than a kite, dead a winter in a tank top I don't want to fight with you, baby, but I won't leave you alone The night was young once, we were the wild ones But we had to pay attention to the violence Anything could happen, but nothing ever really did I wanted action, she wanted answers Sunrise with the dealers and the dancers It takes a whole lot of medicine to be like a little kid Oh, and did you ever love a woman with a death wish? Something in her eyes like flipping off a light switch Everybody dies, but you gotta find a reason to carry on Did you ever catch her climbing on the rooftop Higher than a kite, dead a winter in a tank top I don't want to fight with you, baby, but I won't leave you alone Who's gonna save you? Who's left to pray to? What's the difference in a breakdown and a breakthrough? I saw her in the moonlight digging up the garden bed Till it's over Let her sleep through the morning on my shoulder But there's nothing I can say to her I ain't already said Oh, and did you ever love a woman with a death wish? Something in her eyes like flipping off a light switch Everybody dies, but you gotta find a reason to carry on Did you ever catch her climbing on the rooftop Higher than a kite, dead a winter in a tank top I don't want to fight with you, baby, but I won't leave you alone When your words mean nothing When the world turns to monochrome When you know she's not loving Cause you're feeling in your bones Did you ever love a woman with a death wish? Something in her eyes like flipping off a light switch Everybody dies but you gotta find a reason to carry on Did you ever catch a climbing on the rooftop higher than a kite? Dead a winter in a tank top. I don't want to fight with you, baby, but I won't leave you alone. I want to hold her till it's over. I want to hold her till it's over. Oh, I want to hold her till it's over. Ninety-one seven KXT. It's Jason Isbell and Sadler Vadian joining us for a KXT live session before their show at the Factory in Deep Ellum tomorrow night, and that is Death Wish from the upcoming Weather Veins album. Thank you. I hope nobody's stuck in traffic uh, listening to these sad songs. They may be. <laughs> this it's is not great drive time music. So yeah. If it, you're in traffic, keep your cool. Exactly. Relax, and uh, you know, just just remember that. We, too, all of us are stuck in traffic, theoretically, and it's all Atlanta traffic. <laughs> so even if you're stuck in traffic in Dallas, if you're stuck in traffic in San Diego, technically, you're still stuck in Atlanta traffic because it's yeah. all connected. It's a big We're school. all connected. Absolutely. To Atlanta traffic. There you go.
So, Jason, when we found out you were coming to pay us a visit here at KXT, I, I think everybody in the building came up and shared a story that they had about somehow being connected with your music. You know, they all had, uh, you know, a song or songs that they were talking about that they felt like you had written just for them. And I'm I did. That's the secret. Yeah, I bet it is. That's the secret. You find one person and you stalk them. Yeah. Well, and I, you write a song about them, and they're like, "How did he know?" It's like, yeah. because I was looking in your window, Cheryl. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Did you hear that, Cheryl? Uh, so, I, I mean, why do you think people have such a strong connection to your music? You know, I'm very uh, fortunate uh, because. I'm able to, to, to write songs. I have the opportunity and the privilege of writing songs that are about my life and my experience. And um, I've sort of made it my career uh, to be as honest in the songs as I possibly can. And uh, I think when you do that and you write things that are not necessarily always comfortable, um, rather than somebody just hearing a song and liking it, it goes a little bit further than that sometimes. And they think, you know, somehow uh, this songwriter seems to have known something about my life that I never told anybody. And that, to me, is, is extremely valuable. And, uh, you know, and I, and I think it, it, it's almost, uh, um, you know, it's better than just being an entertainer, I think. Mm -hmm. It's something that, like, um, I, for me personally, I, I feel a stronger connection with people through the songs because I'm telling them, uh, you know, I'm a lot like you, and then they're they're repeating that back, and it's mm -hmm. a it's a very beautiful thing, and I'm, I'm very fortunate that that's the case. Yeah, along those same lines, I know you've inspired a lot of other musicians to do their own versions of your music. Yes. I mean, the song we just heard, Death Wish, Jack White already has done a cover of he it did. as well. Yeah, he did a cover of that before I even played it acoustically. Huh. Uh, he did it, so now I'm playing the Jack White version. <laughs> of that song. I had no other option, but he did, he killed it. It was great. It was yeah. so good. Yeah, no, we were we were digging it, and it, that got me thinking. Though, I mean, do you have any say as to who gets to cover your music, <laughs> or is it just out? Once it's out there, it's out I there. I've been man. asked this question before, okay. my friend. And what's the answer? Um, no, not really. If uh -huh. somebody wants to cover it, you know, as long as BMI knows, I'm fine with it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's kind of like people are like, are, "Are you mad that people think somebody else wrote your?" Your song? I'm like, no, no, no. As long as BMI knows who wrote the song, <laughs> I'm perfectly happy with it. Yeah. But the thing about, you know, the thing about songs is they're, they're, they're a bigger deal than the people who write them or the people who sing them. If a song starts to pick up a life of its own, you just let it go out there and have that life. And you don't tell people, you can't sing this or this is not about what you think it's about. Don't ruin that, you know, because that's you wrote the song, you did your job, you let it out into the world. And then if, if people want to cover it, I'm terribly grateful uh, that people would care enough about it to do that, you know. Yeah. I mean, I might. There might be some way I could say, no, you can't cover my song. I mean, like if it's specifically for a purpose, you know, if it's for a commercial or something, then I can say no. Um, but if somebody just wants to sing my song and record it, then I'm I'm pretty much always good with that. You yeah. know, no, no, no matter who the person is, if the song's done right, then then it's going to be a net positive, I think, yeah. for everybody. So not to pee on anybody's parade or anything, but have you uh, heard any of your songs and you kind of scratch your head and go, boy, they, they kind of missed the mark on what oh, I was. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, certainly. Um, yeah, certainly. Definitely. Okay. Um, we won't throw anybody under the no, bus. No, no, yeah. I don't think so. Yeah, and then sometimes I thought, hey, that's pretty good. And then a couple of weeks later, they did something terribly stupid. <laughs> uh, and I thought, well, you can't have nothing, can you, Sadler? No, you can't have nothing. Um, right but, uh, you know, the song's a song, and yeah. even a bad version of my song is still my song. It's still amazing that somebody would care. Yeah. You know, who like, like I'm just a dude writing songs. That somebody would care enough to want to sing that because right. that's how they felt is just a miracle. Yeah. It's a beautiful thing. Well, you, you still have the guitars here. How about yeah. another song? Well, I try 
to open up my window and let the light come in. I step outside in the middle of the morning and in the evening again. Yes, I try. Middle of the morning. That's uh, new from Jason Isbell and the 400 Unit, and it's from the upcoming album Weather Vane's coming out on June 9th. June 9th. There you go. So, man, there's a bunch of things I want to ask you about, uh, oh, but we Let's only have a few minutes. So, we got uh, all day, man. Yeah. These people are waiting for right. traffic. We got plenty of time. Well, let's uh, let's talk about Twitter. How's that okay, sound? Let's talk about Twitter. All right. So, 
you know, I'm not a big Twitter person myself, but yeah. I do follow you. You're you're quite entertaining on Twitter. It's tough now, though. It's changed. Yeah. You know, yeah. it's a it's a different thing than it used to be. Yeah. And it was already kind of a a, a garbage fire. Yeah. And now it has become a garbage fire that you've tried to extinguish uh, using your own uh, urine. So it's it's pretty rough over there on Twitter. You yeah. know, they've let all the crazy people back on. Yeah. And uh, they've taken away all the verification from the people who aren't crazy. And so, yeah, it's difficult. Yeah, though, and that's that's kind of where I was going. Was the you know uh, now that Elon Musk is is kind of running things over there, has yeah. your approach to what you post or, and the content you put on Twitter changed at all? Yeah, I mean, pretty much all. The only thing that I post about lately is uh, whooping the King of England's ass. <laughs> and uh, it's been the last couple of days because I saw him get coronated the King of England, and I thought to myself, me and most people that I could know that I, that I know could whoop this man's ass and you shouldn't i mean i don't mean to be ableist here i understand people have different what i mean by whoop ass is completely it's inclusive um but the thing about the king of england you shouldn't be the king of england if you literally can't whoop anybody's ass (laughs) i think that should be a rule like if i go up and i'm like you know i'm taking all that jewelry and he can't do anything about it then i should be the (laughs) king of england right yeah so that's really been where my uh, tweets have been focused lately. It's not the promotional tool it once was. Yeah. Well, I was gonna. So, who should be king of England? Uh, whoever can whoop the king's ass. Okay. I think <laughs> Willie Nelson should be the king. Of England. I would agree with uh, you on that because you know Willie is a karate master. He's ninety years old. Um, yep. You know he's seen and done more than the king of England. Uh, I think really, I think Willie Nelson should be the king of England. Uh, okay. But to do that, we would have to go back to England and uh, reintegrate ourselves into the society that we got out of because we didn't want to pay that much taxes in the first place. So, you know, it's, 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 it's tough to decide because it's like, do you want Willie Nelson to be the king of England or do you want less taxes? This is really what it comes down to uh, in today's society. Yeah. Well, I think we can have it all. You know, if Willie yeah. was king, we'd have less taxes and he'd have some serious bling. So uh, That's true. I like That's the way true. you're going. So, yeah. cool. I love that, Willie. You know, um, my wife, Amanda Shires, who is from Texas, she recently made an album with Willie's sister, Bobby. And before Bobby passed, they made a record together. And Bobby had never made an album before. And, and there was some music that she had written herself. And then she went and picked all of her favorites. And they did some standards. And Willie was a guest star on the record. And that's coming out in June, too. And that's just a really beautiful thing. I didn't have anything to do with it. But uh, but it's it's being in Texas, I feel like I should mention um, that beautiful Texas record. Yeah. And you get, you got to say Willie Nelson at least once when you're in Texas. You have to. It's yeah, a law. You have to. And yeah. you just turned 90. Happy birthday, Willie yeah, Nelson. Yeah, absolutely. So, I love that his name is just Willie. It's not <laughs> ex- William. Exactly. You know, it's just Willie. They just had a little baby, and they're like, this is my child, Willie Nelson. <laughs> I wish there were infants named Willie now. <laughs> there should be. Maybe you've inspired some folks. You never know. You guys get out there and, and get romantic, and when everything comes to fruition, name your child something like Willie or Frank, or if it's a woman, like Mabel or Cheryl. There aren't enough. Yeah. Mabel, my grandmother's Mabel's name. A there you go. Name, and there aren't enough like three-month-old Cheryls. And now no. that Cheryl Crow's going to the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, <laughs> It's a perfect time to name your infant child Cheryl. There you go, with an S, not a C. Right, exactly. Okay. Exactly. Although the C is pretty cool, yeah. too. You know, Cheryl Strait is cool. There you go. Um, hey, uh, before I switch topics off the Twitter thing, um, do you have a most memorable exchange that you had on Twitter? Because I've followed some pretty interesting ones, but what would you say is your most memorable there one? There are a lot, man. There's a lot. There's one time I almost wound up accidentally dating Megan McCain. Uh, <laughs> That was interesting, because uh, yeah, I was in Chili's, you know, and it was when I was still drinking, and uh, so it's been, you know, four, 14, 15 years ago, and I was, uh, it had a few cocktails in me, and I thought, man, you know who would be cool to go to Chili's with is Megan McCain, <laughs> and I tweeted that, and then my followers started uh, haranguing her about this until finally she, she and I were speaking in the direct messages, and then I'm on the phone with Megan McCain and we're planning a date to Chili's and it just it didn't work out you <laughs> that's know? too bad um, we went our separate ways our paths diverged yeah. and then there was the the, the the feral hogs you know Willie McNabb and the feral hogs was my most popular Twitter moment probably the most popular thing I've ever done I spent my whole <laughs> life building bridges and writing songs and I'm the feral hog guy on Twitter but you know um, I was making a comment about uh, uh, guns and about assault weapons and uh, the fact that I don't feel like anybody needs one 
And Willie, who is from Arkansas, uh, God bless him, he came in, he said, what do I do about the 30 to, to 50 feral hogs that are invading my yard while my children play uh, every three to five minutes? And this opened up a lot of questions. You know, are they the same hogs every time? Or are there like shifts of hogs that come in and out of your yard? Um, is your plan to fire on the hogs with the children mixed in with the hogs? You know, and this is like a rural white family. So how are you going to be sure that you're hitting the hogs and not your children? Um, and because they, you know, let's face it, we all kind of look like hogs, <laughs> all of us country folks. Um, I had so many questions for Willie, but really, I didn't ask anything. I just kind of said, "What the hell are you talking about?" And it went extremely viral. So much so that, like, uh, you know, Garth and Tricia made T-shirts that they wore around their house and they gave me i have t-shirts that you know garth brooks made about my tweet um <laughs> it went we it got real weird there you go it got real weird but all right the state of arkansas did wind up uh pr sending some federal funding to deal with the hog problem because of this tweet so i feel like we really got something you accomplished, accomplished. Something, i did yeah. more than the than congress about those hogs i'll tell you that yeah it was a public service well yeah. done who's going to kill them hogs well there you my go favorite Tom T. Hall song. Well, uh, I, I, I do have more questions, but I want to hear another song, okay. though. Let's get one more in before you have to go. All right. Um, this is the first time I've been back to Dallas since my friend Jess Barr passed away. So that's kind of a, a, a bittersweet thing to come and see some friends that we shared. I was friends with Jess for many, many years. He's a great musician and uh, uh, owned a bar in Deep Ellen. He's a good man, he was, for sure. Anyway, this is another one of those uh, new songs. Don't wash the cast iron skillet. Don't drink and drive you spill it. Don't ask too many questions or you'll never get to sleep. There's a hole inside you, fill it. Shower up and shave, put flowers on the grave and ask the Lord to save his soul. Was it 27 times? Was it 29? I heard the blade broke off inside the man and he took a while to die. How did you get so low? It seems like just a week ago we were 10 and 12 years old. He was sweet and soft. He shied away. Side fastballs and died doing life without parole. Don't wash the cast iron skin. That dog bites my kid, I'll kill it. Don't walk where you can't see your feet. Don't ask questions. Don't 
91.7 KXT. Jason Isbell, Sadler Vaden, sounding great this Thank afternoon you. in a KXT live session. That is Cast Iron Skillet from the upcoming Weather Vanes album, June 9th. And uh, yeah, Cast Iron Skillet, um, now I've, I've seen the artwork for Weather Vanes, and you actually have a Weather Vane with a Cast Iron Skillet, and yeah. that's that's actually on your house, isn't it? It is, yeah. It's on, it's, it's on our barn, yeah, and it's... Uh it's real. It's huge. You know, you think you see those weather vanes on top of people's barns, and you don't realize if you're standing right next to them, it's giants, like mm. taller than me. You know. Yeah. So we had the thing fabricated, and then we were going to do a, a a photo shoot, you know, with the weather vane, um, uh, in order to put it on the cover of the record, and it it wound up being a much more difficult logistical challenge because the thing weighs like 350 pounds. It's <laughs> gigantic. Uh, but yeah, it, it, it has different different uh, symbols uh, and objects from the al- album. What I like to do sometimes is take sort of a, a concrete detail and uh, and then hang on to that and allow the listener to hang on to that. And then that, that makes it possible for you to travel to a place, mm. you know, in the song. And then, then I can tell you a story and they're more likely to listen to it. Like, uh, like Dreamsicle on, the, on Reunions, it's the same kind of thing. Right. It's like, hold on to this and come with me. And, uh, and I do that a lot. I do that a lot on, on Weather Vane. Good. Well, I'm anxious to hear more on June 9th. i got to ask you one more question before we let you out of here. Yeah. You've got this documentary that everybody is talking about Ooh. right now, Running With Your Eyes Closed. And uh, i got to tell you, that was a great documentary. Enjoyed it thoroughly. But there were a few mi- minutes in there where know, right? you were a little twitchy, you know. Little and little uh, How hard was it? I mean, if it was tough for me to watch, how difficult was it for you to see yourself in that position? It was really hard. Um, you know... It's I do I like to say that there's two kinds of music documentaries. There's the kind that the artist is comfortable watching, and then there's the kind that is good. And so we tried to make the kind that was good. And so basically, I just said, "All right, y'all, follow us around. Whatever happens, happens. You can edit it together." And you know, and and that I'm I'm lucky enough to have really good people around me, and we all trust ourselves and we trust each other. So you know, we knew there wasn't going to be anything too severe Mm -hmm. uh uh, going on i mean i think we're all good people and we're all trying our best um so uh you know we 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 thought this might might work out but uh, of course i didn't know what was going to happen i didn't know amanda and i were going to have some trouble and then uh the 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 pandemic was going to hit and all this kind of stuff was just going to you know materialize out of the ether uh which it made for a good uh, movie, you know, and Sam Jones, who directed it, did a really beautiful job. Yeah. Um, you know, he did the Wilco, uh, I'm Trying to Break Your Heart, many years ago, and I'm starting to think that he's not just lucky. You know, I, I think maybe Sam is like he has some sort of technique for once he's filming people, he finds little ways to ruin their life without them ever <laughs> finding out right. that, that it was him. But, you know, Wilco survived being dropped from their label and lineup changes. And, and Amanda and I survived and our band survived and, and everybody's uh, in a much better place now. It's difficult to watch, but I think it is uh, a piece of work that, that uh, should exist. And that's really my ultimate you know, question is, yeah. does this thing deserve to exist? Was it worth all the time and all the effort? And I believe that it was. Yeah. Now you're talking about the scene where I start my Roomba up, right? Yeah. Is that yeah. the scene People, you're talking about? Somebody told me on Twitter they want a sequel that's just an update on your Roomba. Yeah. yeah. I, I mean, I laughed, I cried, I was moved, sadly. It made so. a lot of people yeah. uncomfortable. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. About it, it. Yeah, it's hard to watch a Roomba. <laughs> you know, cause it's always running into, it's difficult, man. It's difficult. Indeed. And then uh, on the cool side of things, you're also in the upcoming Martin Scorsese movie, I am. Killers of the Flower Moon. Yes, so. and I play a man with very, very different relationship issues um, <laughs> than, than the guy I played in the documentary. All um, right. But yeah, that movie was wild, man. I didn't know what I was doing, you know. I went. I, I think the accent's what got it. Mm. I think that's that's why I got the role because they were saving money on having to teach me how to talk like this. Okay. Because I already talk like this. And I got out there. And like the first day I was there, I was rehearsing with, uh, with uh, Robert De Niro and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, and the, and and the other person there was me. And so I was like, oh no, what am I supposed to do? So I, you know, uh, Marty introduced us all, and and I met De Niro, and I was like, man, you know, I I know you hear this every day, but I'm really lucky to be here, and you know, happy to watch you do your do your job, and and uh, just kind of overwhelmed by it all. And he looked at me like there was something terribly wrong with me. And for about three days, he looked at me as though there was something terribly wrong with me. And then Robert De Niro figured out that this is how I really talk and that I wasn't doing some kind of crazy method 
thing where just at the craft services table i was like right. well hey bob Donero, how you, doing? <laughs> you know he realized i really was a hillbilly and after that he was really nice but for the first couple of days i think he thought that i was you know attempting to pull off some crazy acting method yeah. where i just talked like this all the time oh there you go well we're anxious to see that movie and uh anxious to see you tomorrow night uh sadler jason thank you guys so much for coming in uh really it was an honor to have you in the kxt studios and i've only got about a third of my questions asked so you're uh, gonna you're gonna have to come back okay i will definitely come back next all time right. i'll wear long pants i didn't know uh, <laughs> that there's gonna be people seeing me and stuff if you're listening in on the radio, just know that the the I've got on jorts, full on <laughs> like Vans Warp Tour length jorts right now. And before I came over here, I spilled some cheese dip on them uh, at Fuzzies, as, which is what you do, I We're guess. In Texas, in baby. Yeah. yeah man. Um, so yeah, I'm authentic <laughs> today. I'm wearing some long denim shorts with cheese dip on them. So just picture that. Next yeah. time I'll wear some clean long pants. Uh, no, nah, man. This is rock and roll. That's what you're supposed to be doing. You're so. right. Cheese Absolutely. dip on jorts is rock and roll. Aerosmith right. had to deal with that. Whole <laughs> Every day. All right. Well, thanks again for coming in. Over and out from a KXT live session.